Ethnicity is a theme we see traced throughout the entire book of Acts, but today I want to look at Acts 1 through 12 and see how that theme is critical. The theme of ethnicity is critical to both the purpose, the will, and the kingdom of God. So starting in Acts 1, verses 6 through 8, we see the groundwork laid for what's to come in the rest of the book. Luke says, So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, that's Jesus. It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus sets his mandate for the apostles. He sets his mandate for the church that the word of God will go to the ends of the earth, to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The disciples will enter new places to become new people by joining themselves to those in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. That's what Dr. Jennings says in his commentary. So following this, following this narrative in Acts 1, we see the narrative of Pentecost and what happens. The Spirit descends on the people there. And who were the people there? They were Jews from all the kingdoms of the world. They were people of different ethnicities, of different cultures, of different languages that were all in this moment together where the Spirit fell and filled them just as he will, just as he would the centurion later, just as he would the eunuch later, just as he would the Sumerians later. So what happens in this moment is these people are speaking the mother tongues of those present, not just the common language, but the language that would have been heard by mothers, by fathers, by aunts, by uncles, by brothers, by sisters. This is the ultimate value placed in the cultures and ethnicities of those present and those to come. Because I don't know if you've ever tried to learn a language, but it's difficult. And those that fall in love with the language generally fall in love with the people. So these people are speaking the intimate language of those present. God is affirming the dignity, not just in the tongue, but in the bodies of the ethnic groups represented. So going on in Acts 6, we see an issue arise within the church. We see that there are widows whose needs are failing to be met. And that's a whole thing throughout the Old Testament to take care of the fatherless and the widows. And Jesus affirms that. But the Hellenistic widows, their needs are not being met. So they ask the church leaders, help us in this moment. These needs are not being met. So how do Peter and the church leaders respond? They say, select from among yourselves. Select from among your culture, your people, your ethnicity. So the ethnicities and the cultures of those present must be recognized in order to assign those among them to care for the needs presented. Moving on to Acts 8, we see immediately following the stoning of Stephen, we see a scattering of the church. We see a scattering of the apostles, of the people of God. That immediately takes us back to the Tower of Babel as God scattered the people across the earth, diversified their language. And many times when we think of the scattering of Babel, we see it as a negative, as a consequence. But really, the sin of Babel was that they didn't do the scattering willfully, was that the people of God weren't going to all the ends of the earth, representing different ethnicities, bringing different ethnicities into the kingdom of God. That was the sin. So God's will was accomplished through the consequence of the people's sin, the scattering. And then that scattering continues in Acts 8. So Philip finds himself in Samaria. He preaches the gospel and there are many saved. There are many baptized, but the spirit has yet to descend. Peter and John have been called, but the spirit has yet to descend. Why? So that God could affirm the dignity of the Samaritans He could affirm the dignity of their culture. He could reunite the northern and the southern kingdoms so that Peter and John, as the church leaders, could see that God loved these Samaritans just like he loved the ethnic Jews. Lastly, in Acts 8, we see the Ethiopian eunuch. We see Philip, after the Samaria narrative, he finds himself on a road and he sees an Ethiopian man. Who is that? That is a man of both Israel, he finds himself in the kingdom of Israel, and of diaspora, those scattered. And what is Ethiopia in this time? It's the outer limits of the known world. How do we know that this man is that of Ethiopian descent? Well, it's signified by his blackness, by the color of his skin, by his ethnicity. So Philip, when he approaches this man, he is invited into the private space of the Ethiopian's chariot, affirming the dignity of 
these ethnic spaces, of Ethiopian spaces. Philip didn't ask the man to step down and meet him on his ground. God actually stepped into this intimate space and affirmed that space. See, God brings the kingdom to, like we said, Ethiopia, the outer border of known existence, and affirms the humanity of those ethnic groups. So after the Ethiopian is baptized, Philip finds no reason not to baptize him. That's powerful in and of itself. But after he's baptized, Philip disappears. And it says the eunuch goes on his way. There's no cultural transformation. There's no ethnic transformation. Why? Because his culture and his ethnicity is affirmed by God. He doesn't have to transform to be like the Jews. He doesn't have to transform to be like the Samaritans. Rather, God's spirit, God's love, God's gospel fell on him in his culture, in his ethnicity, and affirmed just that. See, following these narratives, there's more. There's that of the centurion, and there's others to come later in Acts. But these are specific, powerful narratives affirming the ethnicity, affirming the culture, and tracing that narrative of God's love for all people everywhere in the book of Acts.